Okay, so far we have our JavaScript app and the action. The next part to implement is the reducer. But first, let us recollect what we know about reducers. Reducers specify how the application's state changes in response to actions sent to the store. So actions only describe what happened, but don't describe how the application's state changes. Reducers are in charge of that. In terms of code, a reducer is a function that accepts state and action as arguments and returns the next state of the application. In its simplest form, you can represent a reducer as previous state and action returning the new state. Let's go back to VS Code and implement this for our cake shop application. So previous state, comma action, returning the new state. Now what you can notice is that we need two arguments to write a reducer function. The state of the application before making any change and the action. Now we already have our action defined. So what is remaining is to determine what our application state looks like. As a shopkeeper, all I want to keep track of is the number of cakes on the shelf. So our state is a simple numeric value. But if you recollect the first principle of Redux, your application state has to be represented by a single object. So for this example, the state is going to be an object that has a property called number of cakes which is a numeric value. Let's go with the assumption that when you open the shop in the morning, there are 10 cakes on the shelf. We pass this initial state as the default value for the state parameter in the reducer. So when the application is started, the initial state of the application is passed in as an argument to the reducer function. All right, now that we have both the parameters, let's define our reducer function. And I'm going to define this as an arrow function. So const reducer is equal to an arrow function. And the two parameters are state and action. For the state parameter, we supply a default value of initial state. And then within the function body, we will return the new state of the application based on the current state and the action. So within the function body, I'm going to add a switch statement where the switch expression is action.type. If the action type is by cake, we are going to return the new state of the application as a new object where the number of cakes is the current number of cakes minus one. And if there was an action which we haven't accounted for, we simply return the state as it is. Very important to note here that we are not mutating the state object. We return a new object. And that is pretty much your reducer function. It is a pure function that accepts state and action as arguments and returns the next state of the application. Now what we have written here works fine for our example. But in reality, your state object might contain more than one property. That is why it is always safer to first create a copy of the state object and then change only the properties that need to. To make a copy of the state object, we use the spread operator dot 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 and then state. We are basically asking the reducer to first make a copy of the state object and then only update the number of cakes. If there were other properties, they would remain unchanged. All right, with that, we complete another part of our puzzle. The last remaining bit is implementing the Redux store.
Once we implement that, we should also be able to connect all the individual pieces together. So in the next video, let's take a look at the Redux store.